All right. Hello and welcome to 25 Cents, our video game podcast. I am Chris. And I'm Nick. Each episode will be making the rounds through our four corners, console, PC, Apple, and tabletop, with a focus on games that are great to play if you've got kids. And you can find us wherever you listen to podcasts or on the web at goodstuff.net. Work. <laughs> I don't know. You gotta get, uh, yeah, you gotta get uh, good stuff. Web three soon, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. This episode is released only on the blockchain, so if you're not uh, <laughs> NFT, oh, no. Uh, yeah. No, anyways, no. Well, our uh, pre-show wait. chat is dribbling into the the actual show. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Emma. Well, so we should start off uh, Ooh, with um, we actually have a fifth corner today. We're doing a little bit of a special today. Mm-hmm. You want to introduce it? I would love to. I think uh, we're, we talked about last episode of doing like a holiday shopping guide corner, which just to give some folks ideas. I actually completely forgot to talk to my kids about it. That's the, the behind the scenes of confessions of podcasting is real life takes priority, obviously. But I have their wish list in front of me as well. So I can, because we have a shared note that I can reference as we go through it anyways. But we'll start off with console corner. Well, console, the sub corner of all these yeah, shopping so we've guides. Got, we've got corners within corners now. Yeah. We're, we're going full recursion. Somehow we're going to box ourselves uh, in and not be able to get out. I think is the, what's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, it's 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 uh it's like uh, was it Cube? Was that wasn't that that one horror movie where you're trapped? Right. Maybe it's a Squid Game thing. I don't know. Yeah. It's one of those. <laughs> I think it's Fortnite. Actually, that's what my kids always try and do is box me into a little box and uh, I can't get out, and then they. I have me. not. I I've not found time to play that again. Yeah. I should. Um. Anyway, yeah, console. So um, I think I I maybe sniped your pick a little bit here. I I'm gonna say Hades again. Uh, you know, I've talked about it a couple times on the show over the last year. It it technically came out last year, but um, I still see people coming to the game new, and it's on everything now. You can get it on Xbox, Switch, and PlayStation. Uh, obviously, also um, uh, PC. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if there are any other platforms. Uh, I don't think there's a Mac version, uh, but no. but anyway, I, Hades is a great game, roguelike, great replayability, fun story, um, really great art, good music. I mean, just this super giant really knocked it out of the park, and I, I think it's going to be kind of a new classic uh, for the for sort of defining the the genre. And and we're probably going to see a lot of um, other games who are not only trying to be roguelike but are trying to be Hades like, right? They're going to try to hop on that. Um, that style that they managed to capture. For anyone who's listening, what what is Rogue like? Just for a reference point, who doesn't know? Right. It? So so Rogue was a uh, a very old game for ooh, I don't remember what system that was on. Atari maybe. Uh, anyway, uh, early early eighties. But the the key idea is that it's procedurally generated. So every time you do a run, every time you play the game, you start off fresh at like level one. Uh, and you, it's going to be different every time. There's going to be different enemies, different rooms. Um, and uh, when you die, you don't regenerate where you were. You have to start all the way over. But in many modern roguelikes, there, especially Hades, there's an element of progression where as you go through each run, you collect things that make you more powerful for the next run. Um, I think another uh, rogue legacy was one from a few years ago that that really, I think kind of hit the sweet spot on this. Um, that was more of a, like a Metroidvania style uh, game. But the general term roguelike, it means that, yeah, you're each playthrough, you're, you're starting over from zero, but, and it's different every time. You're not going through the same levels over and over. Right. Unlike, let's say like Super Mario Brothers or whatever, where it's like the exact same level, the Koopa guy comes down at the exact same time, all the time, you kind right. of can learn that the patterns. This is like each time it's different. You'll have similar monsters and similar w- enemies, but just they'll come at you in different ways each time. Right, and and there may be there may be elements of repetition. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you know certainly in Hades there are select rooms that are the same if you get to them, right? Um, but but you don't know when you'll encounter it or what order uh, it'll be in. Um, uh, and Net Hack is another one that I played uh, way back like 20 years ago or so in, in college. And that, that was another one where sometimes you would get to like, oh, here's the room with this one kind of monster and this one kind of treasure chest, but you don't know exactly when you would encounter that area. Right. Yeah, so Hades definitely uh, anyway. is a, a, worth, a worthwhile pickup. I, I'm kicking myself a bit because not only did you pick 
my pick that I was going to pick. <laughs> but I also <laughs> I hesitated. I didn't pull the trigger. It had a Black Friday or whatever sale on it for on the Switch. I think it was, and probably other platforms too. But I was thinking about grabbing mm-hmm. it on the Switch, and I didn't. And because I just every time I go to buy a game, I think my my uh, I don't know whether it's my Mennonite upbringing of being cheap or just uh, fear of money disappearing disease or whatever <laughs> that I think I already have a huge backlog of games that I haven't played. Wait until I finish Breath of the Wild as my canonical game that I keep referencing, even though I haven't played it in a month and a half or whatever. Um, that I, that I need to go finish that first before I'm allowed to buy more games. So, anyways, don't be don't be a Chris and <laughs> go buy <laughs> go buy Hades or or pick it up for your kids. The one I guess like it is a a slash them you know kind of killing monsters and so it, if your kids are a little it's afraid definitely of that rated kind of stuff, teen yeah 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 and not like gory violence cartoony violence but still you know more violent than something like yeah Fortnite even where there's no blood spurting even if it's goofy exaggerated blood yeah <laughs> and that stuff so yeah I mean I I have not um I've not shown it to my son right who's eight like it's not appropriate for for his age yet uh, there might be kids that age who are cool with it but at least not uh not ours yeah uh my console pick would be um one i've tried play just a little bit of but i think and if you're on xbox at all you've definitely aware of it already but halo infinite is a new game that's coming out december 8th the multiplayer angle of of it is a freely available to play right now so similar model of fortnite etc where it's free to play the multiplayer side but the single player game is going to be what's for sale or part of game pass it's on xbox and windows pcs as well and mainly because either you are familiar with Halo from way back and you've played a bunch of it with, you know, three Xboxes in your living room with your friends on multiple TVs, or uh, you're new to Xbox and Halo would be a great, Halo Infinite will be would be a great introduction to the franchise and a way to sort of, because there's a lot of Halo games and you, it might be difficult to know where to jump in exactly. And so starting off, as long as you're okay with gun violence, obviously in, in a game with your kids and if you're old enough for that and enjoy that kind of game, um, it's a fun multiplayer experience and the maps, there's just a different kind of like space vibe to it than something like Fortnite or Call of Duty, etc. cetera. Um, uh-huh. Definitely not the gory violence of, of like a Call of Duty for sure. Um, but a really fun multiplayer mechanic um, that, uh, yeah, is, I, I've just seen lots of friends who I didn't even know they had Xbox at all or whatever and sharing on Instagram stories or whatever. They're feeling like they're whatever age they were when they first played <laughs> Halo <laughs> again, playing the multiplayer version of this. So, something to check out yeah halo i guess one a little bit but definitely halo 2 was a big part of my college experience right like that was that was kind of the default game if someone had an xbox you know we'd we'd take over one of the the lecture halls and hook it up to the big the big screen if we could right yeah um yeah so and i i i don't think my kid listens to the podcast i might have to edit this before it goes out but we actually it was sitting right over here but um i managed to snag a xbox x by buying one through my Xbox One console, <laughs> somehow it feels a little weird, but um, I guess they're all computers these days. And so we 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 worked out. My wife and I worked out how we're going to actually give it to them. And so it's sitting there in a box, which for me is like painful to not just open it up. And I probably will crack it open just to make sure it's all updated before they open it again on right. Christmas or whatever. But it's actually going to be technically my gift. So if they do happen to listen to this, it actually is mine. I bought it with some birthday money. <laughs> But I'm going to share it with the family. Is how we're. I, I wonder how the the time on console is going to work out in terms <laughs> of who's going to be playing it. <laughs> so yeah, we'll we'll see how that all shakes out exactly. But that's that's the goal, anyways. So it's kind of yeah. Um, moving on to PC, what's uh, you snipe me again? You know, yeah, I I know, and and I'm, Wait, I you don't I even own the you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even own the PC version of this, but I i mean, I, I feel like I come by it honestly in terms of time spent in the game series. Yeah. So I'm going to say Civ Six Anthology. Um, so uh, I think if you if you bundle up the base game and all the expansions, the, the retail price is like $200, but it's been on sale during various Steam sales for under 40 for all of them. Um, so I have the game for iOS with several of the expansions, but not all of them. And not all of them are available on the iOS version because it's a port by um, Aspire. Um, but for the PC version, you can get everything. And I mean, this is just the iconic 4X strategy game. And, and you you were playing it recently. So, I mean, you you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely like one of those classic games, just like we were talking about with Halo, where it's 
you at some point you need to try a civilization game in your gaming career or whatever you want to call it uh, yes and civilization six is a great introduction into the series um it's not like one of those games where it helps to go back and play other ones i'm sure people have their very for various reasons have previous versions of the game they really like playing because of certain uh strategies and things they've done in the game but um yeah civilization six is a great it's visually really well done sound everything and the gameplay and just sort of explaining the, the multitude of decision trees and technology tree and et cetera that you make throughout the game uh done really well on a modern modern graphical interface obviously whether you buy the like the anthology is great if you're just like a dipping your toes into it the single standalone game too is plenty of gameplay as well so don't feel pressure i know it was on sale for for twenty dollars or something at various times too um and even at at full price it's like you're going to get your money's worth out of the gameplay with this one for sure so uh, yeah, hardly. Recommend yeah, it's that one. it's an easy game to sink hours and hours into, um, and and six in particular is generally pretty streamlined uh, in terms of how they've tuned the mechanics over the years, as, as well as uh, modern uh, graphics and multiplayer support. Um, the expansions they get you, you know, additional leaders and units so you can play as other civilizations that might have different bonuses, which can be fun, um, as well as some additional scenario packs if you want to play a particular historical event or era instead of just playing from scratch um the default civ experience is you know one one settler finding founding a city and growing from there um and uh there's also some additional mechanics that get added i think um climate change is added in one of the expansions i forget which one and and similar and related disasters so you can you know kind of up the the scenario and challenge difficulty after you've kind of gotten more comfortable with the base game if, if you're not a, a civ addict uh like like i have been <laughs> well actually it's now i didn't realize this because i have i bought it or i got it for free actually through the epic game store at some point they had a sale or a promo on but it actually is windows mac uh and then steam play compatible so the base game is 11.99 right now on steam which is normally 80 dollars. so i mean it's it's kind of like your gateway drug into the <laughs> the rest of the yeah. expansion packs and the those are selling for some of them for like 60 cents 90 cents or whatever and then you can buy the whole bundle for 45 right now so um yeah it's it's almost like a yeah no brainer at that price and the multiplayer angle is great actually with kids too because you can do turn it's turn based multiplayer i believe always I, I don't know if that was an option i said or whatever but um and then so you can kind of like take you you do your turn you show them what you're doing and then your kid can be on the computer beside you or whatever and play their turn and mm-hmm. you can kind of talk through why and how it would work and so it's not like they're left to their own devices literally and phys- physically or whatever yeah. um off trying to figure this out while you're somewhere else and so um yeah it can be a fun one and then you could play it remotely as well like so uh, if you got friends remotely multiplayer as well so it's it's got a lot of options that way yeah and there's definitely a a, a light edutainment angle right like you you learn who some famous uh, leaders and civilizations of world history are. Um, the game series has gotten generally a lot more inclusive over time. They they highlight a lot more uh, African and indigenous civilizations than say Civ One or Civ Two yeah. had support for. That had a very you know Eurocentric perspective. Um, and uh, so you you learn a bit of history there. The technology tree kind of gives you an idea of of how things have changed over time. It, it has this I, kind of illusion of forever progress, right? Because it's a simulation. It's a game that's supposed to be fun. But I think there's some pretty interesting stuff uh, within that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, for my pick, which it sounds like I was picking Civilization as well, which I kind of... But <laughs> well, I'll, I'll we're, throw in, we're aligned on this one. Yeah. I'll throw in my own wish list item, which I haven't played yet, which is Dorf Romantic, it's called. I think that's how you say it. Um, it's Windows only uh, and available on Steam. And uh, I don't know if it's first on sale or, or if it's actually even out in full release yet. I think it might, st- might still be in early access. But um, it's basically like a, a very chill... We've talked about it before on the show, but a very chill kind of city builder, world builder game that looks a lot like visually like settlers of Catan would the board game and then um kind of building your world out of tiles as they appear and so i think it'd be a nice kind of chill game to play over the holidays and and um probably in along the similar lines of civilization just with less decisions it's just kind of a a hex of six sides i think right is um and so your that's your decision making <laughs> rotate the hex yeah. that you get and then move to the next tile and uh so that can be kind of a fun way to go so that's my pick on the pc uh, moving on to Apple, what have you? 
Uh, so I, I went I went lazy here. <laughs> iTunes gift card. And yeah. and the reason is that's actually that you can't gift uh, like an Apple Arcade subscription explicitly. You can just give someone credit that they could then use towards a, a subscription. Um, and yeah, I mean, you you listen to our uh, our past 43 episodes of the show and, and we touch on a lot of Apple Arcade games. There's almost 200 now, I think, in the whole library. It's a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. So you, you get a lot in there. Um, you know, as we've noted, there are some that are less fun than others or or feel more like a, a weird port or a weird cash grab that got turned into an arcade game. But there's a lot of real gems in there. Uh, you know, ones like Grindstone, um, some some of the more like kind of esoteric story ones. Um, uh, but yeah, there, there's some great games in there. And so I think that's that's what I would recommend is if you've if you've got a an Apple device, uh, for a gamer, uh, Apple Arcade can't go wrong for at least uh, a month or two to for them to dip in and see what they like in there. Yeah, and especially, I think you probably get do you get some sort of trial maybe when if you get a new device, like if you get an iPad over Christmas or whatever. I think right. there's a, a a trial version of it that's included. Um, but also worth checking just because I saw a friend go through this where they lost everything on their computer and all their photos and stuff. If you haven't looked into Apple Apple's Apple One bundle of where you can bundle your Apple Music, Apple TV, which we've talked about, lots of great shows on there, and then Arcade as well as iCloud Storage that comes with that for your either personally or for your family, which you can share with five folks. That's kind of a, well, in this person's case, would have been a lifesaver for their photos. <laughs> but also Ooh, you yeah. get Arcade. You might already have, if you have this already, you might actually have Arcade access already that you're just not using. Um, and so if you're getting Apple Music already, and you're probably paying for iCloud storage because they don't give you enough <laughs> at the base level to back up your phone. Yeah. Then you probably are also in line or should be in line for the Apple One bundle. And right. it, is, it actually is a good deal overall other than the sort of low free tier, which kind of pushes you up into it. The pricing overall, though, is pretty good considering all the things you get. So um, that's another angle, I guess. That would be yeah, my... Yeah, if, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, yeah. Yeah. Um, that'll be my pick, I guess, for Apple is sort of a... Te- piggybacking on uh, the and card. if you're if you're the techie in the family uh yeah. christmas is <laughs> is the time to give the give the gift of of backups uh yeah, totally. you know make make sure your your family's uh devices are behaving as expected yeah uh time machine which like for nerds apple nerds of long long time apple nerds time machine is like a given you buy an external usb hard drive you plug it into your computer and it just backs up it says do you want to use this for time machine you say yes and then you just never use it again generally until your computer blows up or in this case my friend's case they were doing a software update that just sort of hung maybe some internet issues or whatever and just basically had to wipe the computer and start fresh and so time machine would have helped obviously and then apple icloud for photos etc would help as well so all things that are great in hindsight (laughs) don't help the person who's lost their stuff but maybe you can be that gift this christmas is (laughs) the gift of backups and storage Uh, okay tabletop what's uh what's your pick there yeah, so um, I think I've mentioned on the show a couple times, but I'm going with Villainous. Um, and so this is definitely probably more of a like 10 and up, preteen to teen age uh, game in terms of this, the strategy complexity. Um, but it's a great one for the uh, Disney or Marvel fans in your family because you you play as uh, villains from, from there. I believe there's four or five uh, Disney packs now and two Marvel packs. And the nice thing is this uh, this game, they call it the uh, Expandalone. So it's a standalone expansion portmanteau there <laughs> uh, in, in that you you can get the base game and it comes with kind of more more stuff for like the tokens and whatnot. But any of the expansions that adds three additional characters, uh, you can play with just those three characters or mix them in with the characters from the original game or any of the other expansions. You can't combine the Disney game and the Marvel game, as far as I know, uh, but they have pretty similar mechanics. And the the nice thing is each villain that you play has a completely different play style. They have a different set of goals. They have a different set of cards with different effects. Um, so like if you play as Jafar, there's a bunch of cards related to searching your deck to find the lamp, right? right. Um, whereas if you play as Scar... There's a bunch of things about getting tons of hyenas on the board to take out the um, 
the other lions and become king. Uh, so it's got that kind of vibe. It's good replayability. The the different sets of villains interact differently with their goals and how they play on each other. Um, so you get different combinations there. And it's just, it's fun. It's, it, the art is great. Um, it's actually made by a Seattle local subsidiary of Ravensburger that, that got bought um, a few years ago. So it's the, the game designers are here. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a good game and you know, it's, it's a branded game. It, you know, it's, it, it's no, uh, it's no, uh, the child monopoly Mandalorian, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> cash in, but it, it's definitely, you know, if you don't like those tie in games, it's that, but it, it's a solid strategy, a uh, set of strategy games. Yeah. It's something actually one that we picked up as well, actually for the kid, a group, um, group gifts for a family or whatever as well and there's again there's deals on it and stuff over the holidays here probably will be again i'm sure and uh and so looking forward to opening that up and giving it a play um the one i'll, I'll kind of counter i guess with which i'm not that villainous is that that complicated i guess but sleeping queens is a is a card game simple fairly simple card game oh yeah that uh is great for younger kids like our youngest has played it probably since she was five i want to say maybe even four um but it's still like an enjoyable game that as adults you can join in or you know aunts and uncles or whoever happens to be around can very easily pick it up and and play along and it's has enough strategy that it's not just like um a memory game or whatever but is kind of like a an advanced memory game of sorts and uh like i said is great for that post meal coma that where you don't really want to think too much about what you're supposed to be doing but you just um want to play a game and, and be doing stuff with family so and it's not too expensive either i don't think so right yeah that's a good option to consider. And and of course you can never go wrong with just a standard 52 card deck of cards for for many many games uh with family. Yeah, yeah. Uh okay, so moving that's our our very quick but uh sort of topically appropriate gift guide I guess for each each category, each corner that we have. Uh, but now we'll we'll step back out of <laughs> gift guide corner <laughs> and and go back to our regular corners. Yeah. <laughs> our regularly scheduled so okay. not much this this week in, in console corner that we've written down other than obviously the news that I shared earlier, but for myself, but um, what's uh, you had Halo TV series, speaking of Halo. Yeah, so uh, there's going to be a Halo TV series. It seems to be following the Master Chief character based on the short teaser they've posted. It's going to be a Paramount Plus original. Um, so I'm not sure how that deal worked because obviously Halo is a Microsoft property, but they obviously they had to pick a streaming platform to work with, I guess. Um, I know there was a, a Halo movie that came out like maybe 10 years ago that was like kind of some it was like a it was like a cadets at the Academy story. Um, and I watched it on an airplane once and it was pretty <laughs> It, it was it was like a cash in, right? Like they had a bunch yeah. of no name actors in it uh, and it, it was kind of. It was pretty meh, uh, low low production, you know, sci-fi channel kind of movie. Um, but this one looks, uh, as with most current licensed property stuff on all these streaming platforms, uh, very expensive. Um, I, you know, I'll probably try it because chances are we will have Paramount Plus for Star Trek streaming anyway uh, in this house. So... Yeah, I'll I'll check it out. I uh, I think and if you if you like the story and I always found the story of the Halo games to be pretty solid. Um you know, obviously it's got that classic multiplayer we were talking about, but the the stories are pretty fun, you know, kind of epic sci-fi. Yeah. Um so, I'll yeah, I I think it'll be a fun entry. I think it's next year sometime is is what's targeted. Yeah, we'll have to see how we cuz is Picard a Paramount Plus show or is that a different in the states, uh, yes, it, it's a Paramount Plus show. Uh, Canada, I want to—is it Pluto gets it in Canada? Crave, but then or Crave, oh Crave, somehow, yeah. or Crave, and then so, so. Um, uh, Amazon Prime Video has it in some countries, but just for Picard. And then the other Star Treks are on other things. It, it, Paramount really messed up their international rollout, and everyone was very angry about. I think Star Trek Discovery, which is running right now. Here comes the Star Trek corner. I'm sneaking it in. <laughs> um, the the currently airing uh, new Star Trek, which is a Paramount Plus original, uh, Paramount was like, oh, it's not going to be available internationally until next year because it was on Netflix internationally, but then they're pulling back their deal or Netflix was playing hardball on the money or something. And then huge fan outcry. Even some of the actors were like, 
we, this is the first we've heard of this. We're so sorry the fans don't get to see the show. You know, I'm talking to my people, right? Yeah. And and then there was a very hasty press release this past week that's like, it'll be available on these platforms in these countries in like three weeks. Um, the other weird one I saw is it's not available at all in Puerto Rico, which is a U.S. territory. <laughs> uh, but for some reason, like Ugh. Paramount Plus isn't there, even though it's really the U. I don't know. There's weird the the agreements and what's national and international get really weird with this stuff unless you have rolled out everywhere like a Netflix uh, or to some extent a, a Prime Video. Yeah, yeah, what a mess. That's it's funny actually. Parallels to I don't know if you watched the morning show on Apple TV Plus streaming. Um, the the fictional network that they work for is also launching a streaming service inside of the show okay. or whatever, and so the that's part of the deal and and like you know various people and how it's going to roll out and it's being panned because of, as if we need another streaming service and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just that idea of like, just roll it out everywhere. Try and get it like, just follow Netflix's model. It wasn't that hard. And then, you know, all Star Trek stuff, if you can do it, it can be on one spot and all the fans will love you for it. Uh, but yeah, easier said than done, I guess with legal. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's hard. I think for most companies, it's the, it's the legal and copyright and licensing thing more than it is like, oh, can we get a data center with all our video on it, you know, yeah. close to the customers? Because that that part is actually the almost the easier part because there's there's big platforms that can do that for you. Yeah. Um, the um, I think the hard part is yeah, and and uh, you know, famously, I think HBO Max doesn't have any of the Harry Potter movies because Warner Brothers had licensed those out in long term deals to other streaming platforms but only in some countries you know so it, it yeah it's a whole mess and um i think if you want to really dive into it there's that uh newer download podcast that jason snell hosts with uh a co-host whose name i'm forgetting but uh that's a they they really get into the business of streaming which is kind of uh, funny and and interesting yeah um but yeah so we, we kind of diverged into tv corner there a little bit but maybe we should come back to PC corner. Yeah. Um, so I didn't see a ton of interesting news. There's the game awards were announced, but my understanding is this is like kind of just a marketing thing that you kind of pay to get nominated for than it is like what the critics are talking about. Uh, Cause I was really surprised. I haven't played a single one of the nominees for best indie, best mobile or best family. Um, they're just not ones on my radar. Uh, and not just cause I've been doing a lot of Apple arcade, but I, I was just a little surprised. It, it, it was kind of an odd selection of games. And I think some of the discourse I've seen on Twitter is that th this is like one particular industry group that promotes a certain subset of games. And it's kind of as weird. It's not real. It's not like the, you know, the Oscars or something for the industry. It's kind of off to one side. They get a lot of attention, but, um, yeah, the kind of thing where it, when the winner wins, they promote it on their boxes or, or what used to be their game. Boxes. Right. Um, but everyone else kind of just, ignores it then after that if they didn't pay to be a part of the contest or or uh, right. or didn't win um and where and the nominees the only nominees that show up to the ceremony are the ones who have won kind of idea because <laughs> they know ahead of time um you know and what's star citizen yeah so th this is another one i saw is that so star star citizen is still uh not out um so it's, it's been this game that's been very publicly oh, right. under development there is there is an early access version that people who have already paid or money can use, but I mean, it's like a bare, it's not an altogether their game. Um, they've managed to crowdfund huge amounts of money over, over the decade and it's still not out. Um, so it's just kind of one of those interesting stories to follow in the video game world of kind of like, mm -hmm. how is this still a thing? And I guess it's just, you know, the, the, the sheer willpower of the, of the game designer combined with, obviously a lot of interest from from their fans um is keeping it going when when you know almost any other studio would cancel a project if it's not coming out right like so it's it's a it's an interesting little side thing i i thought i, I i'm not familiar with the game but i know it's uh, people have been very excited about it and and it's always 
just about ready, right? <laughs> uh, kind of like uh, Duke Nukem Forever was. It's one of the, actually, it's one of those games, it comes from the lineage of Wing Commander, so if you're an older gamer mm. like myself. That's what it was, yeah. brings us into our five formative game meme that you posted here, um, which I completely forgot about Wing Commander until I saw that this was from the same creator of that series, which that is actually one of those right. formative games that I played that was like this amazing, expansive space world that you could fly through, um, and it felt incredible, especially for the time. Um, but uh, yeah, without yeah, I think I think Star Citizen is supposed to be trying to capture that feeling on an even bigger, more modern scale. Uh, yeah, but it's not out yet. <laughs> yeah, especially in a world where um, what's the one? No Man's Sky is out. It feels like right. that ground is well trodden and really popular already. How are you going to do something that different? But I mean, who cares? It's, I'm open to the, <laughs> the possibilities. Uh, yeah, I mean, there can there can be multiple big space uh, epics out there yeah. uh, for sure. So what are your five formative games? In- yeah, so I saw this going around. Uh, I think we, we there was some discussion in some discords and, and on Twitter, um, but people were, were talking about their five formative games. So I think for me, um, I don't need to say more about the Civilization series, but I'm going to pick specifically Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri, which was more or less Civ 2 with some slight improvements to the engine and in space. Uh, so, you know, instead of uh, building a historical civilization from 4000 BC on Earth, you are landing a, a colony pod on a, a planet of uh, you know, our nearest neighbor star. Um, and it's, it's just great. There's there's like a kind of a sci fi story. The different factions are all have a really interesting vibe. And, um, you know, one of the ways you can win is by helping the planetary network of like fungal life achieve sentience basically uh or or maybe it's always been sentient so there's, there's this kind of that's one of the stories as you go through the tech tree um so that, that's one i love a similar simulation sim, the simulation vein sim city 2000 so classic city manager um uh pretty there, there are newer sim cities that are much more advanced in a lot of ways um, or, or you've got like city skylines that really has a lot of complexity. But I think SimCity 2000 is kind of the right mix of uh, simulation and uh, uh, you know being simple enough to be to be accessible to kids. I mean, I was playing that heavily mm-hmm. as a I guess like a preteen maybe. Um, and then going in the old school Mac direction, I, I want to throw in the Ambrosia software shareware game series escape velocity so another space epic um you know you you start off as a little independent trader in a shuttlecraft and eventually uh go through this whole epic story you 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 know you build up your fleet you could become a pirate you can you know kind of join you can join the like the the sort of federation type group you can join the sort of rebel type group um and there have been a couple iterations in the series. Uh, there was Escape Velocity, uh, Escape Velocity Override, and Escape Velocity Nova. Um, and it was also famously um, uh, very extensible. You used ResEdit, uh, if you remember the old Mac tool, That's to awesome. create um, plugin packs of little, you know, uh, 2D sprites and and story text and whatnot. Uh, so I even I even did that for a while. I was making my own little ships to <laughs> to customize the game, and you could then go and find you know someone would make like, oh Babylon Five. There's a solar system with the Babylon Five space station in it, and you can now go dock at it. Or you know a yeah. Star Trek, uh, you know, like an Enterprise D uh, ship pack or a Star Wars pack. So there was a ton of um, you know infringing IP uh, <laughs> <laughs> plugins that you could go get for your favorite sci-fi franchises, a uh, Dune and whatnot to integrate in. Um, and uh, yeah, that was, that was just a, a classic for me. Um, Mist, uh, of course, you know, a, a famous, uh, you know, I guess it's a point and click adventure. Um, it, it was originally on Mac cause it was powered by HyperCard, uh, but it's since become available everywhere. We've talked recently on the show about some of the remakes that have, that have come out, uh, or ports and, um, you know, just a, a game with a really engaging story and at the time really amazing like 3d rendered uh art and and puzzles and, and everything and um it spawned a whole series uh, riven i think probably being the best entry um but uh, i enjoyed Mist 3 exile and and some of the other ones there was even a a brief attempt at a mist mmo that 
didn't go anywhere um, <laughs> in the early 2000s at during the peak of the MMO craze. Um, yeah, that's that's a great one. And then finally, I got to throw a puzzle one in there. Uh, I'll go with the original Tetris. Um, and so for me, it was we had the DOS version on a PC. Nice. Uh, it was the original Tetris, but it was the DOS port. Um, so it had, you know, some color, I guess it would have been like VGA color, um, and the, and the music. Um, but my, my dad and I would, would, you couldn't do two player at that time, but my dad and I would just have a high score competition going, um, you know, cause I think it was 10 levels in the original nine or 10 levels. So, and, and it would get really, really fast at the end. And it had all this weird, you know, like. Uh, the USSR at the Olympics imagery on some of the levels and other, or, or being on the Mir space station. So it had that whole kind of Soviet vibe to the whole game. Cause it, it was created in Russia. So it, it was interesting in that regard. And obviously many Tetris and Tetris like games uh, that have occupied me over the years. So I, those are my five kind of touching on some different genres and eras of my life, but also very much focused on my sort of peak game playing, in the mid to late 90s yeah i think that's where i'm like a little earlier than you and so some of like my first my definitely the formative game series like whether it, which whichever one it doesn't really matter but the whole quest quest series from bethesda mm -hmm. no not bethesda it was uh, uh, uh sierra sierra online yeah right or before they were yeah. online <laughs> uh yes. space quest king's quest police quest etc yeah um i just ate those up and it's just like you're basic sort of procedural game you follow through and you have to like guess the right make sure you type the right words or ask the right questions with the right words and figure it out and move your character around and it was like mind-blowing at the time of course uh, how good these games were and, and it like really told a great story as you walked through it all mm -hmm. i'm not sure if i'd want my kid playing police quest now at 10 years old or whatever it was when, <laughs> when i played that looking back but um it was definitely uh yeah and even just a different environment now like you have police and everything, but Space Quest was a fun, like sort of like just like you were saying, like you get you get to sort of imagine and go in sort of, into sort of this fantastical story that is very otherworldly. Obviously, um, mm -hmm. the other extreme, I guess, would have been Doom or Wolfenstein 3D. Any number of uh, games that were like that, where it was kind of like a the typical like run around shooting guys, but also it opened up the door to multiplayer. At I had uh, LAN access at my dad's office at the time when he was like a investor financial advisor guy and in the evenings and weekends we'd take over his various co-workers <laughs> nice. computers and install doom and try and network them together and i don't know what they thought when they came back to their office on monday morning but like yeah late at night on a you know a saturday night with nacho flavored fingers i'm sure <laughs> all over their office but uh somehow we did that and similarly uh warcraft too like the series there which i think two or three i forget which one added LAN capabilities as well for multiplayer. I think that um, was two. Yeah, definitely three had it, but yeah, I think two would probably have introduced it, and I don't remember. It's all a blur as far as which one exactly we spent the most time on, but definitely tons of hours of Warcraft play, uh, multiplayer, especially uh, in a financial services office. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, and then Age of Empires for a real-time strategy game that I played, which is, I mean, similar to Warcraft, obviously, but a lot more solo play, but, um, and uh, Warcraft, Age of Empires 4 has just been released. It's Windows only, unfortunately, but haven't taken the plunge on that one yet. But that's definitely a series that kind of opened my mind up to the the fun of that kind of genre, I guess, outside of sort of the fantasy element. And then mm -hmm. uh, Diablo 2, which is just your, I mean, it still is Diablo 4, I think is the most current Diablo, which I haven't ever played other than a demo, I think, on the Xbox at one point. But um, yeah, your basic sort of RPG started off that, or at least made that style super popular um for a lot of people outside of the outside of like the core group of obviously D D, you know nerds who, were, who would love it. It, it i remember diablo 2 was played by friends who had no business or no interest in playing any sort of D D game but loved playing diablo or Diablo yeah 2. i think it's it's pretty much the canonical like action rpg like if you're if you're not thinking of the the sort of the zelda games i think diablo is probably the one that you know, would be the most influential on, on the industry uh, in terms of, you know, running around, hacking up monsters and demons and, and getting, getting the loot, especially yeah. a very, very loot oriented uh, uh, game. <laughs> and like the, just thinking back to even as a parent now, reflecting back on the games that I played as a kid, and like, I don't remember what age I was, let's say I was 14 when, when Diablo or Diablo 2 came out and like going out and buying a box with just the biggest demon head with flames coming mm -hmm. out on the cover literally called Diablo, the devil, and in, in a 
Christian household at the time, you know, like, I don't know how my parents, they were just either oblivious or just happy that I was doing something fun, I guess. I don't know, not into drugs. Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, I definitely had a, as we've alluded to, fairly restricted uh, media access, but I think by, by kind of mid to late nineties, it, it either, it wasn't mattering as much, but I think that's part of why I had so much time in these sort of simulation, you know, edutainment adjacent games like the Maxis ones. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, I did somehow get like Wolfenstein 3D, but I, I think I remember, I think I copied it from a friend or something, but I think I remember my dad being like, yeah, you should delete that one. <laughs> um, so I, I mostly ended up playing, playing those games, you know, at, at other places at friends or, um, yeah, I remember I may have mentioned before, I think my one of my friends had a birthday party like at his dad's lab at the university where all the grad students had put Doom on the LAN. Nice. Uh, and so, you know, we could just use all the all the computers there. Yeah. Um, I've, I've never played uh, Age of Empires. Um, and then I guess for the question, I think I checked out King's Quest five, maybe from the library back when that was a thing you could do. You could get like floppy oh, yeah. disks from the library. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and but I, I got stuck pretty early and and you know didn't have internet to go look up uh, walkthroughs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I I gave up on that one. But uh, yeah, it'd be yeah, another one of those good puzzle story games. Throw my kids into like King's Quest one or two or whatever because there's a there's like they yeah. incorporate fairy tales and and as part of the story it was kind of just fun to like play these stories that you'd heard out on in game form obviously but I'm sure it wouldn't hold their attention the same way it did to you know me as a at the time obviously yeah but, um, I, i'd be curious it, like would it be the would it would the graphics and interface be the main blocker or would it be like the the density of the story or the fact that games generally had to be made harder to get a, like a reasonable amount of playtime out of them because yeah. you couldn't have that big of a game anymore or at, at, at the time we've had some come i forget which show it was we were watching let's just say it was like the muppets you know reissue on disney plus or whatever but uh their their old series and i've heard i've had a few comments from my kids at various times are like oh this is so small it's not even widescreen and it's so grainy and it's so like <laughs> complaining about <laughs> quality so i could see them doing something similar where it's like it's so pixel like you kind of get to that point where you're, i think for us pixely is like nostalgic but for some games or some people anyways it's like a, a sign of old crappy game or whatever so um but anyways, we should keep moving because we've. I think we're going to run out of time to get yes. to all our corners. I just want. I, it is worth noting, Epic Games bought Harmonix, which I see you posted here. Harmonix, the creators of the Rock Band series, and uh, just interesting to think about what might happen with this and whether it means some sort of Rock Fortnite band crossover event yeah. or what. <laughs> I, I mean, you can really see them working together, right? Because the Rock Band is like the rhythm game. Uh, entry and you know kind of that there's guitar hero and rock band were were huge there for a while and and it seemed like everyone had it uh as like my peers as young adults that was like a thing you could do you could like oh yeah i've got i've got a drum set you know come come play uh in a pretend band with us um now you as a more actual band playing person (laughs) probably have a different experience with it than than i did but no it's like a great it was awesome for like we had the beatles rock band kit the mm-hmm. whole set at one point and and we would like cart it over to like family get-togethers and play drums and guitar and sing and whatever and because it was especially having the beatles one was a brilliant tie-in just because then it crosses so many generations and uh yeah and it's still fun to learn how to play and and so we'll see they in the in the frequently asked questions about it says does this mean more rock band instruments will be made and they say this is not in our current plans but i mean it's only a matter of time if they think there's a cash grab there for a, a christmas full of rock band instruments being shipped all yeah. over the world. <laughs> I imagine the the hardware they were probably generally selling at a loss and and hoping you would buy the games and and the seasons and and download the music and, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, moving on to Apple Corn, we'll do a, a quick run through. Um, you, did you try Lego Star Wars Castaways? The new yeah. One? So I did. Um, I, I did try this a little bit. Um, so this was a new Apple Arcade release. Uh, it's the you know, it's it's a it's a Lego Star Wars game. Uh, it's a little different than the more general adventure ones because it is a lightweight MMO. Like you're, at least when you're on the sort of mission hub area, there's other players and you can choose to play missions multiplayer with them, like in, in sort of a matchmaking way. Um, my son was able to play, you know, a little while and and like level up without much assistance at all. So it's, it's definitely more accessible to like the seven, eight range. Um, there are ground missions where you're kind of doing the classic uh, Lego Star Wars thing of, you know, you're running and you you have to 
shoot a few stormtroopers and they break into Lego bricks. And then maybe you like unlock something or move, move a block and then you can get to the next room. And then there's some space missions where you fly around in a Lego X-Wing or TIE fighter and pick up some things. Um, I did not try any of the multiplayer. I just kind of touched on it. I, I think I'll play, play around with it a little bit more, but um, yeah, it's, you know, if, if you want a kind of entry kid safe MMO, it's, it's a good, it's a good place to start. Like, for example, you don't get to pick your own name. You just pick from a set of Star Warsy names. Right. Um, and then you get a number after it. So, you know, it's, it's safe. There's no chat. Right. So th- th- there's a lot of ways in which it's like a- an MMO that's kid safe, uh, which is which is nice to see um, a- as as an option. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I'll play around with it a little bit more. And it's some... very I think it's the top ranked on the store right now. Yeah. I mean, they've got a really good. I mean, Lego branding, Star Wars branding, and then on Apple Ar- Arcade as well. Um, all uh-huh. sort of great tie ins right now and can be promoted the heck out of it, I'm sure, over the holidays here. Um, and and then it's Mac iPhone, iOS, obviously, and then Apple TV as well, which I'm sure it'll look really good on an Apple TV screen. Yeah, I need to try it there. uh, With controllers and stuff. So um, very cool. And uh, maybe we'll skip the Netflix gaming stuff. Or did did you try, did you have a a quick summary of that? I can can mention it quickly uh, because our our Netflix subscription is about to uh, expire. So I think we talked about Netflix had announced some games. A few of them are out. There's some Stranger Things tie-in ones. I tried one called Teeter. Uh, it's a basic little puzzle game where you have to you move a little ramp and your ball rolls and you want to get it into the good holes but not have it fall into the bad holes. Um, it gets hard really fast, I found. Um, but you know, it's it's a kind of classic mobile game. You know, it, it only takes a minute to play a given level unless you get stuck and then you play it a bunch of times. Um, it's tied to your Netflix profile, so you have to log in and then you can play as one of your profiles that you've created in Netflix. Um, there's no game center tie in. So all of your progress and stuff is tracked on the Netflix side. Mm. Um, the one thing that I thought was interesting is the version history started at 1.9.0, which makes me think either it's been in <laughs> development for a while or they like bought this game. Cause it, it doesn't have any connection to any Netflix properties. Um, and, and the other funny part was my, my son saw me trying it and he's like, Oh, is that a new arcade game? <laughs> Oh, it's a, what Netflix makes games. Oh, that's so weird. Uh, and then, and he's like, oh, I guess they want you more in the subscription. So uh, you keep subscribing and, and then they make more money. And then he goes, Oh, marketing, which I don't even know where he was getting this from, but it was very like, I don't know. It was very entertaining. Yeah, uh, like kid he, perspective on. Probably hearing you guys talk about as adults about some of that stuff. And sar- the, I know our kids pick up on the sarcasm and stuff too. And, they yes. interpret that and re- rework it in their own sort of language or, or ability or whatever to understand it and often kind of miss the mark with it, but they say their words in the right way or the, yeah, like rolling their eyes in the right yeah. <laughs> style. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. He's ready to be a tech podcaster too. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, it was, it's an okay game. If you have Netflix, grab it, play it, try it out. Uh, I think it is on both Android and iOS if you have Netflix, which is a kind of a nice cross, cross-platform angle. Um, you know, it's not a game that you would subscribe to Netflix for. It's definitely a bonus on top of Netflix. Um, and it's kind of interesting. But like I said, we're, we're letting our subscription lapse because we're we're streaming Star Trek and other stuff right now. So uh, yeah, I've been I actually... may come back and see what the games are. I, 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 it's hard for me to imagine Netflix putting out games that would be worth keeping your subscription for if all the movies are or tv shows are you know you've watched or whatever but i know every time i'm about to where i've been pushing to for us to like let our laps our netflix subscription laps because definitely been in more in the disney plus and then apple arcade or apple mm-hmm. tv plus category for us but um yeah now we just rediscovered this is us which is a show we'd watched the first four seasons of but then had forgotten or six seasons i can't remember which one we're on but anyways it's like a a tv show that we yeah, now you mm-hmm. we're on that rabbit hole on Netflix again, and kind of <laughs> just like just when you think you're going to get out, they pull you back in. So and I'm sure the yeah. season of The Crown will come along right away, and then you know, like they, yeah, obviously time it all very well and very well thought out. But that's life these days. Um, all right, do you have a hard out here or uh, we keep going? No, but uh, I think um, I don't know. Do you want to touch on Tabletop Corner? I don't know if there's too yeah. much left, and we Looks can like wrap you've the got show a game. then. Yeah, so uh, I picked up, uh, it was half off at Target, so it was only like seven or eight bucks. Um, 
so this is a game that won one of the Spiel des Jahres awards, I think, in 2020, called The Crew, The Quest for Planet Nine. Um, and it's an interesting fit. So I, I, I was aware of it. I hadn't ever played it. Um, but my son had been kind of asking, like, oh, if there are any other legacy style games like P Pandemic, but not, you know, about a global pandemic. Uh, and this one has some legacy like elements, it, or, or it's more of like a, a campaign. So the back of the rule book is a set of missions, and each mission has like a different set of uh, requirements or goals. Um, it's a trick taking game. So there's there's cards in four suits, and and you're trying to uh, cooperatively take particular number or combination of tricks in a particular order. Um, so it'll be like, oh, the first player has to capture the you know the green five, and then the second player has to capture the yellow nine, and so on. Um, it seems pretty fun. We've played three or four rounds so far. Um, there are some rules about what you can say about what's in your hand, and you're, every round you're allowed to communicate one thing with a little token. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thing. It's like, oh, you know, how do you kind of like almost bridge conventions? How do you tell the player to your left that they need to give you a low red card so you can play your high red card? You know, that, that aspect to it. Um, but yeah, it's it's been fun so far. Uh, my son's very interested in continuing to play through the missions uh, with the three of us. Um, I think uh, it's also I think it's his first trick taking game. You know, we haven't really exposed mm -hmm. him to like hearts or or pitch or or one of those. Um, uh, pitch was a big one in my family growing up uh, that that we played a lot of. Um, <laughs> I think. Uh, he he did not like that. There's something called the Trump suit, so I guess there's that. <laughs> <laughs> that that yeah, word may true. have been ruined for for all card games uh, for for a certain crowd. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he asked us to call it something else, yeah. which is an interesting. So what'd you come up with? Call it. Uh, what did What did we say? For other families. Well, the, in the group. game, they're the, the in the game they're rockets, so we just were oh, okay. calling them the rockets. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, the story is kind of fun. So it's you're you're progressively training for and launching a space mission to go explore the newly discovered ninth planet of the solar system, which is not Pluto, uh, but a but another one out in the distant uh, uh, beyond Neptune. So that's the that's the the premise, and yeah, it's cheap. It's a quick card game. It seems like fun so far. Neat. That's a good good pickup. Yeah, I, I don't know if we are a lot of our board game stuff. I guess there is some of the stores here do carry them, especially around like the holidays or whatever, um, but mm -hmm. tend to be more special order up here. And so you're you're not it's pretty rare to find other than obviously like the monopolies, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, the more slightly obscure games or whatever, we don't see a lot of um, in the bigger chains anyway. So, but uh, yeah. That's a good, good. Yeah, we have our local game store where we can get you know pretty much anything, including the the weird imports. If you if you order ahead, uh, they can usually get those. Um, but like our local Target, I've noticed that it has a reasonable game section, but it's very much dominated by either yeah like the branded Monopoly games or other like really basic kind of Hasbro games. Or um, I feel like it's sort of like a oh I need a party gift last minute kind of section, right. but it's all of the kind of cards against humanity clones so there's a ton of card based party games of, of various themes or like you know and there's one that's clearly for like a bachelor or bachelorette party and there's one for like you know like more family oriented or not and and they're all just kind of that category of oh here's a prompt on a card and now do something silly so there's a huge chunk of those at the target which is kind of funny yeah yeah well it is the season but uh, mm -hmm. all right, well, let's wrap up this episode, I guess, of 25 cents. Uh, thank you for listening to our podcast, our video game podcast here. If you've got things we missed, maybe uh, that are on your Christmas wish list that you think our listeners should know about, you can let us know. You can find uh, us on Twitter at 25CArcade, and you can find me on Twitter at 20, uh, no, <laughs> 20, <laughs> I'm stuck in a loop. <laughs> at 25iChris. <laughs> There's probably something there, don't don't go there, but uh, yes. find me at iChris. <laughs> And you can find me on Twitter and pretty much everywhere else as Ultranerd. That's N U R D. And you can find 25 cents wherever you listen to podcasts. Be sure to check out the Good Stuff Patreon, patreon.com slash goodstuff, and all the other podcasts at goodstuff.network. Mm -hmm.